The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord. The shepherds went in haste to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and an infant lying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known the message that has been told them about this child. All who heard it were amazed by what had been told them by the shepherds. And Mary kept all these things reflecting on them in her heart. Then the shepherd returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told to them. When eight days were completed for his circumcision, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. The Gospel of the Lord. Now, I'm not going to keep you long this morning. If you want to do yourself a good deed, I would suggest you rent a movie called The Greatest Story Ever Told. It's based on a novel with the same title. And it was written by a man called Fulton Ausler. He used to be the editor of a magazine called the Baltimore American. And as an editor, of course, he had many opportunities to attend various kinds of conventions, Democrat, Republican, and also religious conventions, Methodist convention, Baptist convention, and so on. And despite the fact that he attended all these religious conventions, when he was 30 years old, he became an agnostic. There was no happiness in that situation. In fact, it was very the opposite, a lot of unhappiness, discontent, which eventually led to depression. There was nobody who could help him because he had serious family problems also. His friends couldn't help him. God couldn't help him because he didn't believe in God. And so one evening, on a windy evening in New York City, he was walking down Fifth Avenue, and he came to St. Patrick's Church. He stopped, thought, should I go in, should I not go in? But eventually, he went in, sat down, collected his thoughts, and then said, please give me the gift of faith. That's all he said. But then he got up and he went into Our Lady's Chapel. And there he knelt down and he uttered this prayer. In 10 minutes or less, I may change my mind. I may scoff at all this and love error again. Pay no attention to me then. For this little time, I am in my right mind and heart. This is my best. Take it and forget the rest. And if you are really there, help me. If you are really there, help me. Immediately, there became a kind of change in him, a transformation. And eventually, it reached a peak where he went to the rectory and started to study the faith, eventually becoming a Roman Catholic, Fulton Arsler. Then he wrote that marvelous novel, The Greatest Story Ever. Told. Today we celebrate the new year, and 
I think it's true to say that there's always a feeling of hope about a new year, a feeling that things will be better. There'll be less crime, less war, there'll be peace, there'll be more justice. That's what its first New Year's Day is all about. And it's a wonderful thing to start this day on the feast of Mother Mary. Because you see, Fulton Arsler, not only in his search for God, he found God in St. Patrick's, but in the chapel of Mary, the mother of God, he found also that Mary was not only Jesus' mother, but she was also his mother. And of course, she came to his rescue. The Alexander Pope, the great poet says, hope springs eternal in the human breast. And it does. We always hope for a better year, a cure for Alzheimer's, the end of war, and so on. We hope, we hope, we hope. And so on this day, if we are making any resolutions, I think perhaps the one resolution we should all make and it is this, that from this day on, we will pray to Mary every day, at least one Hail Mary. And just as she came to the rescue of our Fulton Arsenal in the chapel of St. Patrick's, we will be absolutely sure that in our time of need, she will also come to rescue us. <laughs>